Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my scrapping experiment that I have just completed. Now, this was years in the making, literally, which I will explain in this video, but hopefully this will show you just another potential way to make gold and just my experience with it. I will make sure to leave a timestamp down below on each process so you can skip through the video through however you like. But thank you guys so much for watching, and here we go. So to get started, we're going to first actually define what a shuffle is. Now, there are really two main types of shuffles. The first one is a vendor shuffle, which sounds just like its name. What you do is you buy up a group of materials, you craft it into a specific crafted item, and then you sell that item to the vendor for raw gold profit. A very popular vendor shuffle is the composite bow. Then the second very popular shuffle is a disenchant shuffle, which is very similar and sounds just like the vendor shuffle. However, instead of selling that crafted item to a vendor, you are simply disenchanting it. So you buy a set of materials, turn it into a crafted item. For example, you buy lightless silk and craft shadow lace bracers, then you disenchant that crafted item, and then you turn that into other items which you can sell on the auction house. So you disenchant that shadow lace bracer, and you get soul dust and sacred shards which you sell on the auction house or use yourself. And so in this video, we are doing a scrapping shuffle, which is most similar to the disenchant shuffle. Instead of disenchanting, we are scrapping it. So this comes from the BFA scrapper, and what we are doing is buying materials, turning it into a crafted item, scrapping it, which turns it into another group of materials. More specifically, I purchased Tide Spray Linen off the auction house, as well as a nylon thread, which comes from a vendor. I craft Tide Spray Linen Bracers, which uses both of those resources. I scrap them in the BFA scrapper, then I gain linen, thread, deep sea satin, and border deep sea satin, as well as expulsum. So that is just a overview of what this shuffle is. It's basically a three-step process. You have to buy the materials, craft it, and then scrap it. And moving on, we're going to talk about why this is a thing. And so why are we actually doing this shuffle? And the main purpose of this is to craft deep sea bags. Now, a few of you may be confused if you did a lot of scrapping in BFA. During the actual expansion, Tide Spray Linen Bracers, or really any item, would give back the same type of items that was used to craft it. So, in BFA, Tide Spray Linen Bracers would only give linen and nylon thread back. However, in the Shadowlands pre-patch, which came out on October 13th, 2020, it made it so these bracers and really any sort of green cloth item gave back all types of BFA cloth. So technically, you could do this long form of transmuting Tide Spray Linen into Deep Sea Satin, which, granted, creates these bags. Now, we do have a few side purposes as well. As you guys know, we're going to get the embroidered Deep Sea version of that cloth. And so you can either just strictly sell it off on the auction house, I honestly choose to do that most of the time because I take the lazy way out, or you can use them for the embroidered deep sea bags, which are the bigger slot bags. The only downside about these is that they do require the tidal core or the hydro core that comes from dungeons, so you have to take that additional time to run those dungeons. But either way, works out fine. Then lastly, you also have that Expulsum, which I use for Uncanny Transmog. You can also use this on a scribe for the compendiums, but for the purpose of this video, I scrapped everything on a blacksmith to make Uncanny Transmog. And of course, you have some leftover linen and thread, which I guess you could do more shuffling, I guess? Oh no, God! No, God, please, no, no! And all right, we've talked about the what and the why, and now we're talking about the actual process that I ended up doing. And so at the end of BFA, whenever the BFA mount farms were super, super popular, a side effect of these farms were a ton of cloth. And so at the end of BFA, 
all the way up to about a year ago, I ended up purchasing almost 215,000 Tide Spray Linen. The exact number is 214,395 linen. And so I bought this all for an average price of 25 silver, which is insanely cheap. And so this took up a lot of guild bank space, but the ultimate purpose of this was to craft it into about 21 and a half thousand bracers to finally scrap in the BFA scrapper. Now the process, like I talked about in the first part of this video, there are kind of three steps. You have the buying step, which is very, very easy. Then you have the crafting step, turning those materials into the bracer itself, which takes the most amount of time. Thankfully, this is AFKable as BFA items do overflow into the mailbox, so you can actually AFK this until you get disconnected from the game. Unlike Shadowlands Vendor Shuffles, where it stops if your inventory gets full. But in order to craft 21 and a half thousand bracers with a two second crafting time each, it takes about 12 hours of constant crafting to complete this. Of course, this is not including, you know, getting disconnected. This is not including mailing the items off to another character, etc. Then we have step two of the process, which is turning those bracers into the other items by scrapping them at the BFA scrapper. And so we have those 21 and a half thousand bracers, and in order to scrap them, it takes 1.5 seconds each. So that means I have to scrap for a total of nine hours. Now, the issue with this is that this actually takes a lot longer because with scrapping, you know, you have to go back and forth from the mailbox. You have to pick up the items from the mailbox. You have to actually, you know, mail off excess items. You have to make sure you click the scrap button every nine items if you're using an add-on, etc. So just for good measure, I'm going to add an extra three hours just to, you know, overestimate. So... In total, the process of this would take about 24 hours of constant work. We have 12 hours of crafting and about 12 hours of scrapping. Now, thankfully, I was able to cheat a little bit because I have two accounts. So my second account was basically AFK crafting the whole entire time. And then I was sending those bracers over to my first account who could scrap as I was crafting. And then eventually, you know, I could leave my computer running and I could craft as it was fully AFKable. And so by the time I finished all of the crafting, I was able to scrap on both accounts at the exact same time, basically doubling my speed of scrapping. So all in all, the actual active hour time it took was about only 15 hours compared to the original 24 hour estimate. And so after scrapping 21,439 bracers, we got about 32,000 of each item, besides Expulsum, where we got about 3,400. I will make sure to put the individual screenshots and amounts on screen. We got about 32.1 thousand linen, 33.1 thousand thread, 32.1 thousand deep sea satin, about 32.2 thousand embroidered deep sea satin, and about 3,400 expulsum. And this is where the profit breaks down. So in terms of total spent, of course, we bought that 215,000 linen for about 25 silver a piece, which means we spent about 54,000 gold on linen. Of course, in order to craft these Tide Spray Bracers, we need five of the vendor material, which is nylon thread each. Because I have the discount due to reputation, instead of buying this thread for 60 silver a piece, I can buy it for 48 silver. So I needed 107,000 nylon thread, which would cost me about 51,500 gold. So all in all, my total investment into this project is about 105,000 gold. And so what does this actually mean? All right, Penguin, you've told me exactly how much stuff you've gotten out of it, but what does this mean? And so, like I said earlier, the main goal of this is to craft bags, which are the deep sea bags. And currently I have a rank three in these, so I can craft them the cheapest way possible. So out of the amount of deep sea satin we've got, 
I can craft 1,284 bags, and I will have about 17,000 leftover thread as well as linen. Now, to give you a estimate potential profit, as I finish this shuffle on Friday and I'm recording this on a Sunday, technically I have not sold all of these bags, so this is a potential profit. I am valuing each bag at about 350 gold. I believe this price is very conservative, as the NA region price is about 410 gold, but I always want to estimate a little bit under just to give the best actual answer. Hey guys, it's Future Penguin, and I just want to quickly say that I do make a mistake right here. I say that I'm going to value the bags at 350, but actually, when I was doing my math, I ended up valuing the bags at 410 gold. So I'm about to say that the bags are going to make me 500k, but it's really about 60k less than that. And then when I talk about profit, yet again, you just need to take away 60k. So I do apologize about this. However, for my server, the 400 number is actually really reasonable, and I've already sold bags for more than 400 gold. But I just wanted to quickly put that in there, just in case if you double check my math and realize that I'm using that 410. But thank you and enjoy. So using 350 gold per bag, we will be making 526,000 gold from these bags. Now, that is not profit. Remember, we spent about 105,000 gold on materials, which means with just selling bags at 350 gold apiece, we will be walking out with 421,000 gold profit. So almost half a million gold profit from this whole shuffle. Now, the next thing we talked about was the embroidered deep sea satin. Now, there are two different things that you can go about this. You can take the slower way and use this embroidered satin for the embroidered bags, which sell for about 5,000 to 10,000 gold apiece, and you have to go run either heroic or mythic BFA dungeons. Now, I am pretty lazy and don't see myself doing that, so I'm taking the easy road out and just selling these off on the auction house. My plan is to sell them for about two gold a piece, as I have done that in the past. So after the 5% auction house cut, I can expect about 61,000 gold from the embroidered deep sea satin, which means our total profit has gone up to 482,000 gold. And lastly, we are left with expulsum, which I'm going to be a little bit conservative of, as this is a transmog market. Now, previously in this video, I did state we have about 3,400 expulsum. However, to save myself time, I scrapped some of the bracers on a second account, which means that expulsum will basically never be used, as that character is just a random character who doesn't have, like, professions leveled. So, I have 765 expulsum stuck on that alt account, which means I only have about 2,600 usable expulsum. That is still completely fine, and if we look at the blacksmith expulsum pieces, the uncanny gear, it takes anywhere between 3 to 5 expulsum to craft one piece of armor slash weapon. We're going to use 5 for this example, yet again to make the estimated profit lower, so we're not overestimating, and we have enough expulsum to make 526 uncanny pieces. Let's just say we're going to make an average of 5k profit per uncanny piece. A lot of these pieces could sell for a lot more of 5,000 gold, but yet again, being conservative. So, if we sell out of all 526 pieces, which will take forever, but if we do, we will make 2.6 million gold. Adding that 2.6 million gold to our previous profit, that ends us with 3.1 million gold profit from this shuffle. Now, of course, before you guys freak out, this is pretty unrealistic, right? Selling 526 pieces of transmog, especially as multiple of these will be duplicates, as there's only so many plate uncanny pieces, it's going to take a while to sell those. So for the last numbers, I'm not going to include this in the actual profit numbers. However, please remember that we do have this expulsum, and making 5k profit a piece is not unreasonable. You know, who knows how long it will take to actually sell all of those pieces, but eventually, whether it takes a year, six months, 
three years, five years, ten years, whatever it is, by the end of it, I should make about 2.6 million gold profit. But, alright, I have been talking about numbers forever, and here is the answer. Is this actually worth it? And of course, this comes down to you, and I probably, to be honest, wouldn't recommend it. And the best way to explain this is by finding an estimated gold per hour. So if we go back to that profit of just selling bags, so not including expulsum or the embroidered deep sea satin sales, we are making about 420,000 gold profit. Our estimated of hours worked before was 24 hours with a single account, which means that's about 17.5k an hour. If we take my personal hours worked of about 15 hours since I have a second account, that is about 28,000 gold per hour, which 28 is pretty good. Now adding the satin profit, as the embroidered deep sea satin selling for 2 gold is not unrealistic at all, the 24 hours gold per hour goes up to about 20.1 thousand gold. And then the 15 hours, which is my personal gold per hour, it is about 32.1 thousand gold. Which, 32.1 thousand gold an hour is pretty good. That is better than most farms out there at the current moment, and definitely whenever the region-wide auction house becomes a thing. And just for the sake of the expulsum, if you want to count the everything with the 3.1 million gold profit, I'll leave the estimated on screen, but please don't take that as our actual profit, I'm going to personally go with a 32,000 gold per hour. And so yeah, is it worth it? Is it not? It's kind of up to you. I mean, this was a pretty boring process, crafting and scrapping for hours on end. It's definitely not very fun. Also, you know, 32,000 gold per hour or 20,000 gold per hour if you have one account is not great. There are a ton of old world material farms that you can probably make over 20,000 gold per hour and it's probably a lot more enjoyable. However, I did really enjoy this experiment and it's something that I've just been holding on to and really needed to get rid of these items. You know, I've been holding on to these items for over a year and it was just finally time to clear out the guild banks and get this done. Overall, I am very happy, and I'm looking forward to the profit that I'm going to make. Of course, guys, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, whether you are actually going to do it yourself or not, which, to be honest, I wouldn't recommend, but let me know your thoughts about the shuffle and if you've ever done it in the past. Of course, if anything is confusing, feel free to let me know, and I'll try my best to explain. But, as always, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and have a good day.